Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. Today's date is March 22nd, 2013. I'm your host, Rob Dew, and here's a look at what we have coming up. Tonight, Congress demands an investigation into the massive arms buildup by the DHS, and FEMA is federalizing police for domestic war. Plus, the Cyprus bank crisis is escalating, and Alex Jones talks with America's number one populist, Jim Hightower, in studio. Up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Our top story, and this is one of Alex's big stories yesterday on the Alex Jones Show. Obama, now head, global head of Al-Qaeda. This is straight from InfoWars.com, written by Paul Joseph Watson and Alex Jones. President Barack Obama is now the global head of Al-Qaeda, bankrolling, arming, and equipping terrorists around the world in order to achieve his administration's geopolitical objectives, while simultaneously invoking the threat of terrorists domestically to destroy the Bill of Rights. Moving on down, the administration has spent nearly half a billion dollars, $365 million plus another $60 million, and is now using U.S. Special Forces to train militants in Syria who have pledged allegiance to al-Qaeda and who continue to carry out grisly beheadings, terrorist bombings, targeting innocent civilians, and chemical weapons attacks against women and children. Down at the end of this article, and this is an amazing article with tons of links, I encourage you to get this article out to everyone you know because they're going to read this headline and go, what, you can't be serious. But you know what? There's links in here, and at all points, to one man. That's Barack Obama. At the end here, by backing terrorists in Libya, Afghanistan, and now Syria, Barack Obama has carved out a role as the global head of al-Qaeda. Wherever on the map his administration wants to dominate geopolitically, al-Qaeda terrorists flood in to do the dirty work, and it's all paid for with your tax dollars. By ordering a drone strike on the White House, Obama would be targeting the primary source now responsible for the most of the world's global terrorism, his own administration. These are pretty big words. These are powerful words. You've got to read this entire article. I, I wanted to cover this today because I was actually took a day off yesterday, but I listened to the show using my iPhone app, the Alex Jones iPhone app, which is free. Of course, you can get that um, on the InfoWars Listen page. And I was listening to the show, and I remember at noon, Alex said, I got big news, we're going to launch it at noon. And he went into this whole Obama being global head of al-Qaeda. Very important article. You need to get it out to everyone you know. Equally disturbing and, uh, and well-written on, on the same page is, is Melissa Melton's article, FEMA federalizing police for domestic war. Don't think DHS is capable of something like this? Well, look at this career and jobs out of the U.S. Army. Internment resettle it specialist. That's a 31E classification. And uh, basically, your job duties are to put people in prison camps. There it is. External security to facilities, counseling guidance of individual prisoners with rehab program records of personal internees and their programs. All very loving and brought to you by the people who are buying two billion bullets. What could they be buying two billion bullets for? Tanks, uh, assault rifles that they say are personal protection devices. Okay, this is all from the same group of government forces. Well, now we've uncovered a document, which apparently is very hard to find. If somebody wants to send it to us, you can uh, send us the information at, send it, to, send it directly to me, robd at infowars.com. It's robd at infowars.com. FEMA's Center for Domestic Preparedness site is a listing for a program known as Field Force Operations. It details how DHS has been training state and local law enforcement to prepare for and successfully mitigate Threats involving civil disorder should a national special security event occur, our NSSE. Activities included in this course are massed arrest procedures, team tactics, demonstrator tactics, crowd dynamics, and mob behavior, use of riot control agents and less lethal munitions, and the employment of personal protective equipment, or PPE. And... Uh, some of the training critical skill sets include understanding the 1st, 4th, 8th, 14th Amendment to the Constitution and how to work around those, I guess, is what they want to do because they're not going to respect your rights at that point if they're using less lethal munitions. I actually witnessed one of the first uses of the LRAD device on American citizens in Pittsburgh in 2009, 
and I can speak from experience that this is a very painful device, and it was brought on by, uh, it was used on a crowd of peaceful demonstrators, and it was used to, they, they'd done nothing wrong other than marching on the streets and wanting to be heard and wanting to tell the leaders of the G20 that, hey, we don't trust your global uh, economic program that you're trying to sign us on to. Let's continue on this article. While these courses have been available for several years now, it puts the bulk of the weapons, ammo, and riot gear purchases in a much clearer perspective in regard to exactly what DHS is gearing up and training our law enforcement for, and that's mass arrest of the American people. That is what they've been training for. You can go get the documentary Police State for the rise of FEMA. It details basically everything that's happened up until 2010 of what they've been doing. It includes the underwear bomber, how they use false flags to just start taking away our rights. I mean, we've got it all in there, and we're continuing to put this stuff out on Prison Planet TV. We've got special reports done by Alex. We've got the two billion bullets. We broke that story, and we're going to have more on that later. But it's just increasing. The tide is starting to turn on these people, and we have to keep getting the word out. Well, hold on, the tide is turning. I'm coming on the nightly news. Now, here comes Alex right now with a special report. Hey, Alex. Now, There's the mic right there. watching you do the news. Yeah, you're doing yeah. a great job. And when we say we broke something, we're not saying we broke it like we're big studs. You broke it. You helped us force it out in the mainstream. Now they're having congressional investigations start up. Right. And if we can force them to talk about the military-industrial complex preparing for war with us, what they call black helicopter people. Now, that's yeah. mainly military vets that know a takeover drill when they see it. Right. Been warning us. We've held it back this long. Now it's building up. And so I just wanted to say that, you know, it's like your video you did about military training to shoot people that don't turn their guns in. That's yeah. what the manual says. That's been seen almost two million times. Well, and that's what a guy who was there called into the show and talked to Mike Adams. He said, hey, we were kicking in people's doors saying, we're here to help. We're here to help, but we want your guns. And that's what they were going after. And it wasn't, it wasn't pretty, and it was during a time of crisis. So they were using the crisis to go in and As actually a take people's test. rights. Exactly. So, so the point here is that the government wants to collapse everything by design to make you a slave, folks. We've got to get upset about this and get out of our coma and get out of our fear-based mind control. Exactly. Life is happening, and it's, it's all about your destiny to resist this. Anyways, I'll get back to the news. It's just right. that you're doing a great job, and I wanted to point out that thanks to the listeners, the viewers, the drudgereport.com, uh, yep. you know, getting these stories out, they've gone from denying it and saying it doesn't exist to this being a big deal. Because, yep. see, they denied it because it exposes them. Right. Now we've caught them in a lie, which shows the criminal intent. Exactly. They lied. And now they don't want to talk about it. Absolutely. They don't want to talk about it. Now they're going to pretend like, oh, nobody yeah, has so everybody watching this on the nightly news, everybody that watches yeah. this later on YouTube, make this video get two million. Great job, dude. All right. And that takes us to our, our next story, actually. Fifteen members of Congress demand investigation into Obama's ammo hoard. This is by Paul Joseph Watson, came out today on InfoWars. This is a story that the Watson brothers broke and that we just pushed to the forefront, and we didn't stop talking about it, and that is why it is out there. That is why Forbes magazine wrote an article saying we have to have a national conversation. That is why Luke Radowski went out and asked uh, Congressman Timothy Hulskamp, Hey, what are we doing about this? And he said, you know what? I have questions. I've asked DHS, and they're not saying anything. They're being tight-lipped about it. So we need to start, start asking uh, the dung beetle more questions. We need to find out, what are they really preparing for this for? It's not for target practice. These are hollow-point bullets. Why are the targets that they're ordering of pregnant women and old men with shotguns in their homes, standing in front of books, kids with guns? I mean, this is all insane. Do these people really expect that we're just going to wait for them to come round us up and start killing us because we don't agree with what they're doing? No. We're going to stand up and we're going to say something, especially if we see something. Well, let's keep going. Uh, this is from Paul Joseph Watson. Uh, you, you guys saw the video yesterday where uh, Luke Radowski interviewed Timothy Hillscamp, and he said, yeah, they refuse to let us know what is going on, so I really don't have an answer for that. Well, now we have... California Congressman Doug LaMalfa and 14 House peers have written a letter to the Department of Homeland Security demanding to know why the federal agency is buying so many rounds of ammunition and whether the purchases are part of a deliberate attempt to restrict the supply to the American people. See, they can't come out and ban ammunition, so they buy it all up so no one else can buy it. That's one tactic. Yeah, they could be doing that. They could also be getting these weapons for a 20-year war. That's, what we <laughs> That's enough bullets of what they have for a 20-year war against the American people. What have we done? Oh, we don't like war? We don't like endless wars? We don't like our money? 
being being created by offshore entities and then loaned back to us at interest? Oh yeah, we're bad people because we don't like that. So get this article out. 15 members of Congress demand an investigation of Obama's ammo hoard. Which leads us to our next story. This is from the CNS News. Police departments beg and barter for ammo while DHS buys up 1.6 billion rounds last year. Of course, they didn't get the memo. It's up to over 2 billion now. There's the sign there. We'll work for ammo. With the delay in ammunition, some departments are limiting the number of rounds they carry in their handgun because of the shortage of ammunition. We get to the point where it is difficult to have enough ammo to train and also equip officers. And that is Police uh, Chief Cameron Arthur of Jinx, Oklahoma. And he also says ammunition and assault weapons in general have skyrocketed. Let's talk about the prices. In addition to the fact it's not only a lot more expensive, but the time could be six months to a year, in some cases even longer. We started making phone calls and realized there's a waiting list up to a year, and we have to limit the amount of times that we go and train because we have to keep an adequate stock. That is totally insane that we don't have enough bullets for our local law enforcement. Is that done by design? So then when the crisis happens, this economic meltdown that everybody says is about to happen, except for Bernanke, he's just saying keep giving the Fed more money because we're going to able, to, we're going to come back and when the stock market crashes and people lose their savings, we'll, we'll be able to come back and buy everybody's property and their, uh, their houses and their uh, vacation homes or pennies on the dollar and then we'll just keep getting more and more and more. Takes us to our last article, Cyprus bank insolvency crisis quickly escalating may set off EU bank again. This is from Natural News, Mike Adams. As you have suspe suspected, there's far more to the Cyprus bank crisis story than meets the eye. It turns out the shutdown of the Cypriot banks has caused a large-scale financial shutdown of the Russian government, which uses Cyprus banks for most transactions. On top of that, the EU central bank has now issued an ultimatum that threatens to revoke all financial support and crash Cypriot banks if they can't come up with 5.8 billion euros by Monday, Reuters reports. Now, if you listen to the Alex Jones radio show yesterday, he had Greg Palliston talking about it, and then today, Paul Craig Roberts. Two great economic minds, both guys that have spent their, their you know, many years, professional careers, studying this type of stuff and studying economics and how it works and how bank crises has happened, and how those meltdowns happen, and how they even talk about it, creating that mob scene of crashing the bank and then watching the mob come in. So then they, that is, is the precursor to get the cops in there and start beating people over the head, like what you've seen in Europe already. And it says there, you're about to witness wealth massive, witness massive wealth destruction. And that is directly from Mike Adams himself. So, and just to let you know, we're about two years uh, behind Europe, so what's going to happen there is going to quickly make its way here, and it may accelerate. We may be six months, we may be 12 months away from what's happening in Europe. The only thing we can do is get the word out and start waking more people up so that this becomes a national conversation, like the 1.6 billion, which is actually 2 billion bullets. The only way this stuff happens is when you get out there and you start waking people up, you start talking about it. We're going to go now to our quote of the day. And this is from John Adams, and I'm going to do this in my, uh, my northeastern, uh, I guess, my northeastern voice. Here we go. All the perplexities, confusion, and distress in America arise, not from the defects in their constitution, our confederation, nor from want of honor, our virtue, so much as downright ignorance of the nature of coin, credit, and circulation. And that is John Adams, our second president. And we have much more in store for you today. We have uh, an interview coming up with Alex Jones and Jim Hightower, who Jim Hightower known as also the number one populist out there. They go through a myriad of issues, especially covering drones. And then after that, we're going to have, I think it's at least a 20-minute Ask Alex, or as he likes to call it, an Ask Christy, where uh, Christy Hightower, the moderator from PlanetInfoWars.com, gets to sit down and types in your questions that you send in. And I was the cameraman on that. And let me tell you, they're great questions, a lot of good questions there. And you, too, can uh, ask Alex your own questions by joining PlanetInfoWars.com. There's the website there. There's the Ask Alex section. And basically, you just join, you become a member of that, and you send your questions into Christy. She collates them, gets them ready, and then sends them out to Alex. And then we put it out on the air for you to see. Also, consider, if you're watching this on YouTube, to become a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. It pays for everything you see here. 
I just looked at some behind the scenes stuff we're about to do. We're about to build a massive set. This is going to blow even the mainstream media away. I'm really impressed with this. We're working with um, the same designer who helped us work on our, our little fireside chat set where we have the bookcases and, and the nice chairs up uh, in the map behind there. Sort of our, uh, you know, kind of our, let's have, sit down and have a nice cup of coffee and talk politics and the New World Order and, and these crazy people who want to destroy our way of life. And with that, we're going to go to break, but we'll be back with much more. It's InfoWars Nightly News, and I'm your host, Rob Dew. I'm Darren McBreen, and these are some of the new items that are available now at InfoWarsShop.com. Alert the public to Obama's blatant abuse of power with the new Obama t-shirt. Obama's joker face on the front and come and take it on the back. It's time to publicly call him out for what he is, a tyrant. Defend the Second Amendment with our top seller come and take it t-shirts. And look at that, women's cut tank tops and t-shirts now available. Nice hat. Plus, the Don't Tread on Me flag. And now you can become a micro distributor of the InfoWars magazine. Plus, get your own copy delivered right to your door each and every month. And if you're tired like I am of you and your family being exposed to polluted drinking water, get the Pro One High Performance Water Filter. It gets rid of all pathogenic bacteria, cyst, fluoride, heavy metals, and numerous other contaminants. So join the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com.